Hi, thanks for watching. I'm filming from a temporary studio as my main studio's roof is falling in. I'll show you videos of that as we go along, only because it's really interesting. Uh, one of the trusses, uh, the apexes in the roof, has split and pushed walls out a bit. So it's quite a big job. So I have to get out of it for a while while it's mended. Um, and that's partly why I haven't been doing videos, but I should be able to do a few before Christmas and after Christmas now. Uh, I don't have any more art fairs or anything on either, so here we go. And this time I'm doing these lovely, uh, very organic pieces of paper, homemade paper. It's my cheat. It's tissue paper with um, bits and pieces stuck in between it. And you make this, these lovely holes and then you have this lovely texture that you can paint up and add to your abstracts. So you don't have to stick them down onto the abstract first. You can add colour here and then stick them on. The only problem is, is that you then need lots of different colours. And as I said before, when I do an abstract, I never have the right colour. You know, you start off with something and you think, oh, I've got all this lovely paper that I've done, um, and never the right colour. So I will do a good few of these so that I've got them as, you know, to use, to colour up when I want them. So, here we go. I've got a few things, oops, it's absolutely freezing in my studio at the moment. I've got a few things that I wanted to show you, like um, these speciality papers that have already got these lovely textures and things in, but they're expensive. So I thought we could have a look at ways of making these sort of things. I mean, even this, it's really nice lattice of hessian, which would be really nice in textures. And of course, you could separate it and pull it apart a bit. But to me, for my work, this is too regular. I like things a bit more organic. So I was going to show you a couple of ways of making these sort of things. Um, even these, they're fairly organic, but I find them a bit too regular and a bit too samey. You know, the holes are all evenly distributed and things like that. And as I said, they're expensive. So, I've got my usual suspects, tissue paper, methyl cellulose glue, there's some mulberry paper, and my threads and so on, and a couple of other bits and pieces, like this is wrapping paper. See what happens with this when you wet it and separate it. Uh, see if I can make some organic structures. So I start off with a piece of cellophane. Um, put a piece of tissue paper down. Put a load of cellulose glue on. It's basically wallpaper paste but without the additive. So, and the, the cellophane is so that the paper doesn't get stuck to the cellophane or the papers or the surface underneath. And you can let it dry so you can either just put one of those on, it's just to make it a bit stronger. So you can either do this and then, especially when it's wet, when it's wet and more vulnerable with the glues, you then work into it and make holes in it and make your own textures. You see, you separate them and open them and you can do it with a, a blade, um, a needle, so that's just a, a knife. Lots of little holes. I say needle or knife. I'm using a palette knife here. But um, this is the first time I've really done this. I'm experimenting and what's really nice about the process is I'm doing it with you and partly because um, I'm doing the videos. I'm having to think of new ideas all the time, so it's really good for me. As you see, I've just put a piece of black paper underneath so that you can see what I'm doing and the sort of compositions I'm making. When you've I've used two sheets of paper to give it extra strength, and when you pull it apart, you get these nice bits and pieces of sort of edges and things that work really nicely when you paint it. Just give it extra texture. So don't try and be neat and tidy, that's not necessary. I just added another bit, mainly just to play with the composition and with what's possible.
and I might well tear the edges or cut the edges at some point if I want to. I'm just playing really. As I say, I don't really know what I'm doing, so um, we'll see how all this turns out. The next one is, oh yes, always put down a sheet of plastic again because you want it to not stick and you want it to be able to, to, be able to manoeuvre it without it tearing because once it's wet it's really vulnerable. So this one is with the threads. So it's the same principle as the last one but um, the threads give it extra strength. They um, create a strong edge to the holes that you're making and they also give it extra texture. And also I use the cellulose glue and cotton threads and papers that are all going to absorb inks and acrylics and watercolours in a way that if you used anything that was nylon wouldn't. You know, the colour of the actual thread would influence the colour at the end. So you put all the threads on, make sure there's loads of glue on top of it and then place your piece of paper over and then push it down so that it actually meets. There's no bubbles, there's no air gaps. I mean, it, again, nothing really matters in the end. And there's so much glue on that that when you wet it again with some paint, all the glue will be activated again. So um, again, you've got to make sure you paint it on a cellophane or plastic base so that it doesn't stick because you're activating the glues. And what really was lovely about this is it was really organic. The shapes of the holes are determined by the movement of the threads and so on. So it really works nicely. Uh, cellophane or um, wrapping down and then I did some packing paper. Um, this was a little bit too regular for me so I don't think I bothered with this in the end but you might like it and I have used it on a couple of abstracts so it does have its uses. What's really nice is when you've manipulated this, when you've put through uh, put the glue on it and let it set, it maintains its shape so it's sort of a bit easier to use if you do want to use it on anything. You're not trying to spread it out on a painting when you're doing it, especially once it's coloured, it'll just go down flat because it's set so solid when it's dry. So good luck with that one. <laughs> it was interesting. I just didn't like the regular patterns and I don't think I liked you realising what it was. It, you know, it was evident that it was something man-made to me. I put a bit of tissue paper on it extra there just to reinforce it and also to see what the textures did when you painted it. Um, although I don't think I painted this that much either. But it was interesting. Um, an experiment. See what happens. And again, you lift the whole thing up by the plastic, makes the piece so manoeuvrable and you don't rip the delicate tissue papers. So this one was just regular lattice and I lay them over. I don't lay them all vertical and all horizontal. I sort of I suddenly realised halfway through this, I sort of put the vertical ones down and some horizontal ones and then if you put the vertical ones down after as well, you're weaving them a bit, aren't you? Just makes the whole thing a bit stronger. So you've glued down the base and the, the actual threads do stick to the glue a bit. But if they don't stay parallel um, or in its grid structure, you can just pull the ends of it to make it stay. Because uh, gluing it gets a bit tricky, but you need a lot of glue on to take the next layer of tissue paper, which sort of sandwiches it all together. And you just pull the ends of it, of each thread, in order to keep it straight. So I know this is a regular one, but I wanted to show it to you because it does have a nice effect, this. Because when you open the holes up, uh, they're all torn and ragged and have a really beautiful look about them. So this is taking rather a long time. <laughs> You'll have to fast forward this bit. So make sure there's loads and loads of glue on it and then you can put down your paper and the glue, when you glue it up they will drag it off but it doesn't matter, you can put it back down again. I left this one to dry because 
that way the lattice sort of stays in place. If you start making holes in it when it's wet, then uh, you move the threads around too much. And I'm only using two pieces of tissue paper here because that one was too small, so I was just bringing another piece on rather than cutting some more. And again, you press down between the lattice of threads so that the tissue paper really adheres to the other piece. Uh, just makes it easier to use. And then I leave this to dry before making the holes. If you leave it to dry, then wet it again. But because the some of the glue stays strong, you can get work through into the holes. And this is just tissue paper or it was actually a, like a white kitchen paper, but you could use toilet paper and basically you're just making papier mache shapes, aren't you? So I just organised it into a way that I found organic, although in the end of this, all the holes, all the areas were similar and I didn't like it so much again. I think what you have to do is perhaps use different widths or perhaps incorporate threads with it. So that things aren't quite so samey or even put more on. I don't know. I wasn't that pleased with this, although I did do again a regular lattice work for another image. And that worked really nicely just because it added such nice texture on top of everything else. So, again, it's up to you, isn't it? And it's up to how you feel it works with your compositions. I moved this, I tried to remove it from the cellophane, from the plastic background before it was dry and messed this one up a bit. If you are patient and let it dry, it comes away really pretty solid. They're a very useful sort of piece. Pieces now, you leave them on the cellophane until they're well dry before you peel them off and then they just peel off without damaging. This one I let dry before I put the holes in. I'm going to put it on a piece of cellophane again and wet it up with water and get the holes out because when this is dry and they're sort of set, the horizontal and verticals stay. The strings will stay in place. So I'll just quickly do that. So I'm going to sp spray it with water, dump it all down again, get these out of the way. Again, keep on the cellophane because, or the plastic because, still glue in it. And then again, get yourself, get yourself a knife and make the holes. I'm really sorry. This in this temporary studio, as I said, I've had to move out of my main studio. The, I'm right next to a main road, and the traffic is dreadful. So I'll probably move on to just doing an audio over my videos because it's so disconcerting having all that noise. But you see, if you let it dry first, the actual pieces of thread stay in place. They don't move around so much as when if you try and do it when it's wet. And then it's just a question of removing whatever you want to remove until you've got a lovely, strange little grid of marks and holes. If you spray both sides, you will get... It will be much more easier to remove it because, in fact, when it's dry, the tissue is pretty strong. I've done um, little snowflakes. There's a video with the snowflakes on it, and they've lasted me for ages. They're much stronger than you think. But if you wet both sides, you're uh, compromising the tissue paper so much because the tissue paper is very weak when it's wet. Also, like depending on which side you want to take it away from you get a textured small textured side you get more textures on the piece that you the side that you take it away from but you end up with things like this look which is just so cute and you can leave the holes full you know filled with the tissue paper and see what it, how it paints up, or you can remove them all. So I've taken out all the areas that I want to, taken off some of the sides just by scraping it with a little palette knife, because I want nice raw and torn edges. And the, the lattice work has stayed in place okay. Really pleased with that one. 
let it dry, and then I'll paint it. And then I can cut it up and use it in abstracts again. So again, I would make loads of these. Tedious, but um, they have such a lovely effect. I'll put this over to one side to dry. I just wanted to show you the sort of effects that you can get. Like this is tissue papers applied to paper. Um, stuck down on a piece of stretch paper on a piece of MDF board. There's a video on how to stretch paper. I stretch it first so that it all lies flat and then I apply bits of textured paper, tissue papers, papers, and this is one of my this is one this is one of my textured papers like so but just um, zigzagged rather than organic. I use methyl cellulose glue on all these so that they are actually still absorbent. There is no seal, there's no plastic seal which you would get with a PVA glue. Uh, the next stage is going to be painting them just to sh let you see what they look like painted because they're beautiful. So you again you make sure you put it on the plastic because you've got to make sure it's not going to stick to anything when you reactivate the glues with the wet paint. I'm just using a really nice red and an orange to create a coral red on this one. I find it's really useful. I use that sort of colour for highlights and things in an abstract. Um, and what's really lovely as well is how the paints take on the folds and the creases and the textures and the edges. So again, try and utilise that a bit. Sort of use water with it and see how it sits on the papers and see how it's absorbed. Because what you want is something unusual. Um, and you're not quite sure how it was done, or at least that's what I want. And this one I've used the reds orange, but with an ochre. And I'm allowed the threads to take up the paint much more densely because they're more absorbent. I'm really responding to the textures and to the edges. If you add water to it as well, you'll see it sort of gathers and pools in certain areas, which is really lovely. I only do three quarters of this one because I'm going to do the last bit in another colour. I think I used greens and blues in the other colour so I had some other colour pieces to use. And on this one it's too regular for me. I don't know what I'm going to bother doing it because I don't like it. I wouldn't use that so I'm not going to do it. No, I don't like that one. So this one. So I decided not to bother with that one at all and got on with another one. Uh, I don't think I'd use that one personally, but if you like it, go ahead and it will be, it could be lovely in your composition. So this one's I'm going ochre, blues and greens, purples, well a sort of mauve and greys. Yeah, again, the blend's so lovely. They're such a joy to see and such a pleasure. Painting for painting's sake. That's just mess underneath the paper. Sorry about that. I'm just a bit more in the middle here. It's too insipid, but I like the grey. I like the dirty colours as much as the bright ones. But you could go whichever way you want, can't you? Way. <laughs> Another one done. I'm just going to try this one. It's not dry, but I, can't, I haven't got the patience to wait. So I'm going to do this one blues I think blues and the yellows so and I want these long leaves painted too oh it's so beautiful I just hope that the colours stay reasonably intense because you know for when it's stuck on when it's dry and how else do you get marks like this isn't that lovely I really enjoyed this one. I think there's loads of potential in it. Maybe cut up, maybe sort of made smaller little square ones of them and put all over abstract so that the threads and things were hanging over. I think this one's going to be something you would use over and over again. If the colours don't seem very intense when they're dry, you can always varnish it and that'll really bring the colours out. Um, and glue it down with acrylic varnish as well or acrylic mediums because that's a longevity glue. This was such a pleasure when I was doing it. Well they all have. In fact I've really enjoyed 
doing this experimental work for everybody because I have learned so much in the process. I've added to my repertoire, certainly. Um, so thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And please remember to like and subscribe. Um, it will be very interesting to see how these are used in abstracts in the future. Watch this space. So there they are, drying on the floor of the studio on their cellophane and let them completely dry and then rip t lift them off and use them on, on the abstracts, apply them to different things. They're glorious, aren't they? And thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and see you again. All the best.